After winning five NBA championship, now holding Oscar, how do you feel? Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, I feel better than winning a championship, to be honest with you. <laughs> I swear I do. It, it, it's, it's, you know, growing up as a kid, I dreamt of winning championships, you know, and, and working really hard to make that dream come true. But then, like, to have um, something like this seemingly come out of left field, you know, and, and like, you know, I, I heard a lot of people tell me when I started writing, and they would ask me, what are you going to do when you retire? And I'd say, well, I want to be a writer. I want to be a storyteller. And I got a lot of, yeah, that's cute. That's cute. You'll be depressed when your career is over and you'll come back to playing, you know. And I got that a lot. And so to, to, to be here right now and to have, like, a, like a sense of validation is, dude, this is, this is, this is crazy, man. <laughs> it's crazy. Not only that, after, <laughs> after the win, you don't have to sit in the tub of ice. I don't. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> We're coming here to 210, and then we'll go to 28. Hey, Kobe Bryant. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we actually met at the White House um, at the opening of the African American Museum. Yes. And you were telling me about this career. Talk to us about how different a skill it is, what's harder about it, what's easier about it, and what have you learned, and what's next? Well, I think the hardest part about it is, you know, when, in playing basketball, the, the, the hardest thing to do is to get out of the way of yourself, right? Try to disassociate. You know, any sense of ego that you have to be able to perform. And in writing, it feels like you have to get in, in a deeper connection with yourself and better understand the fears and insecurities and things that may be going on below the surface. So that in turn, you can better communicate those. And so those are really the two major distinctions between playing and, and, and writing or creating. What? More. More. John, John, John Williams, it sounds crazy to even say that, but. Um, after he scored uh, the film, he, he, uh, he, he looked at me and Glenn and goes, okay, that was way too short. You got to give me something longer. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, we're working on it. <laughs> we're trying. We're going to 28, and then we'll go to number seven. Hi, Kobe. Steve hey. Futterman from CBS. Hi, stranger. Right? Yeah, nice seeing you. <laughs> Obviously, you've won championships, Olympic gold medals, now this. I want to know, you talked about this meaning more to you, but at the same time, can you talk about the struggles that you may understand now about someone who's achieved fame trying to find a new outlet for their talents. And obviously you feel you've found something here. Would you like to make a feature film one day? Yeah, we've, uh, we've actually been hard at work over the last two years focusing on novels. And uh, we've been able to, to create five novels, each novel going out a series of five books. And we look forward to bringing that to the market uh, within the next couple of years. Um, but you know, the, the hardest thing for, for athletes to do is when you start over, you, you really have to quiet the ego. And you have, to, you have to begin again. You have to be a learner all over again. You have to um, learn the basics of things. And um, you know, that, that's really the hardest part. So my advice to athletes is the first and foremost, find the thing that you love to do. Right? You know, I wake up in the morning, I can't wait to write. I can't wait to get to the studio. You know? And so when you find the thing that you love to do, then everything else tends to make sense. We're going to seven, and then we'll come down here to 276. Kobe, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Steve Gregory with iHeart KLAC. Um, I wanted to ask you about how much of this project put you out of your comfort zone, and what was it like working with John Williams? Um, all of it put me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> um, my, my daughter gave me the best piece of advice. I was um, a little uh, uh, worried about turning this into a film. I'd never done that, something like that before. And uh, we were in a house, and we were talking about it as a family. And uh, my little 11-year-old Gianna goes, well, Dad, you always tell us to go after our dreams, so man up. <laughs> She's 11. Man up. So I had to man up and, and, and go for it. Um, and then working with John was incredible. You know, John speaks about music as if they're, they, they, each key has its own soul. And it was amazing to sit with John and to sit with Glenn throughout this entire process and hear the same attention to detail that we each have for our craft, craft um, it's, just, um, it's just an amazing experience to be able to, to work with John. I, I can't even, I mean, the guy's like, he's a real life uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi to me, you know? John had written this <laughs> score, you know, he's like 85 years old, and uh, wrote the whole thing out by hand, in pencil, just like the film itself has been pencil. Um, he's an he's a old school craftsman, and with 80 instruments, he wrote that. And the day that we were recording it, he was like 
this little kid just so energized. Supercharged. And, and I thought, what is going on with John? He gave me a hug, almost knocked me yeah. over. I was like, damn, I know I've been <laughs> retired, but I haven't retired that long, man. He almost knocked me over. And he stood up in front of the orchestra, and Kobe and I sat there. And I, I suddenly realized he's never heard the music. He's just been hearing it in his head, and he wrote it with 80 instruments and recording it. And he lifted his arms, and it was this beautiful score, the score that you hear. And Kobe, Kobe wanted to, to shout, and went, like, no, the red light. And when it was done, John turns to us and says, I promise you, it's going to get better. I said, man, I thought we were done. I thought we were done. And John, John was incredible, man. Yeah. We're, Thank you. Hold on. we're going to 276, then back to 24. La Pantazo Sound of All, New York, Amsterdam News, down here. Oh. Hey, I saw this at the Tribeca Film Festival under Iga Ueno, Whoopi Goldberg shorts. It was impressive and amazing. Thank you. Um, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. You're very welcome. Now, a lot of people talk about their heroes, but I have a question for you. Can you share the sheroes in your life? Oh, yeah. That's, you know, when I um, had the idea of, of starting a studio, um, the, you know, I like cold calling people. And so the first person I called was Oprah. And I, I didn't understand the business at all, as you can imagine. But I, like, I loved writing, so I wanted to build a studio. So I called Oprah, and she was uh, very gracious enough to spend about an hour and some change on the phone with me, walking me through every step of the way of how she built Harpo from day one. And I, I cannot thank her enough for that. It's, it's, she's a mentor then, a mentor now. Shonda Rhimes is absolutely amazing. And um, I was, she opened up the doors for me to go down to Shonda Land and sit in the creative room, writer's room, and be on set. And so when you have mentors like that in your life, um, you know, it, it's, everything tends to work itself out. You just continue to learn from the best of the best of the best. So those, those are my, those are two. <laughs> yeah. And I, don't shoot the messenger. I have been given the wrap up. So 24 is the last person. 24. Wow, big win for me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Kobe, Dan Stans at ESPN Still. Radio. Uh, you referenced the shut up and dribble comments in your acceptance speech. Why did you do that? And what do you think of LeBron's approach to handling politics and discussing them, which is so different from your hero Michael Jordan's approach. Well, I mean, I think everybody must approach things as if, you know, from, from their position of whatever's comfortable to, for, you know, for them. Um, I think you know, for us, not just as athletes, but as just people in general, we have the ability to speak up for what it is that we believe in, whether you're a professional athlete or not, um, whether you're an actor or not, you still have the ability to speak up for what it is that you believe in, and, and as well as, people have the right to criticize that. I mean, this is, this is the democracy that we live in. That's what makes America beautiful, so. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much.